This game has been in the back of my mind for the last couple of weeks now, and it's not for all of the best reasons. I'm gonna do my best not to ramble too much during this review, and I'm not gonna be getting super in depth into the story or anything like that. It's a newer game, and I don't wanna get super spoiler heavy. But there is one thing that I'm going to be showing off consistently in this game, and that's Captain America. I am sorry if you saw the trailers for this game and thought, oh, Captain America dies at the beginning, and he's never coming back. If you actually believed that and you thought that he wasn't going to be a playable character, despite the fact that he is the leader of the Avengers, one of Marvel's most popular characters, and on the center of the box art of this game, then I don't really think I respect your opinion enough to care, so, you know, you can take that complaint elsewhere. The plot is... All right, it's fine, I think it's okay, and at points it's actually pretty good, but it never really reaches the point of great, and that's really a shame. The basic setup is that the Avengers were accidentally responsible for this really big tragedy. They were trying to show off this Terrigen crystal that was going to be this new clean energy source, but it exploded over the harbor and destroyed most of San Francisco, which wasn't a great thing. The Terrigen crystal also released a mist that started awakening powers inside of individuals that are known as Inhumans. These people People with their new powers have become seen as sort of a public threat as people don't really know what to make of them and they, well, can do a lot of things normal people can't. It's kind of like the X-Men, but, you know, not as interesting or in-depth. It was just as much of a problem in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show and in the comics, but at least it did give us Kamala Khan, who is kind of the main character of this game, and I honestly do think that's a good decision. I just wish it was handled the slightest bit better. You see, after a day where the Terrigen bomb exploded and everything, the Avengers were blamed for the whole ordeal. Everybody thought that Captain America died trying to save everyone from this catastrophe. The Avengers were disbanded. This company called AIM just sort of rose out, led by this guy, George Tarleton, who was one of the scientists that was helping discover the Terrigen stuff. And he later becomes MODOK, and he's trying to use AIM to destroy all the Inhumans and make sure that the Avengers can never come back and, like, destroy all super-powered individuals. That's the plot. Kamala Khan, after developing her powers off-screen, I guess, spends the next four or five years trying to track down the Avengers, find evidence to show AIM's true colors to the public, and reassemble the Avengers, get the whole team back together and save the world before MODOK and AIM can destroy all superpowered individuals and honestly from the looks of it take over the entire planet because they can just override government and laws and territory. They seem really good at that in this game, and it feels like it is hardly addressed. It's a fine setup. I actually think that these characters are portrayed relatively well. I do like Nolan North as Iron Man. I do think that it's cool that he didn't go straight for the Robert Downey Jr. portrayal. You know, he tries to do his own thing with it, but there are times when it feels just a little bit too much like Deadpool for me to recognize it as Tony Stark. It's a little distracting, but I, again, I do respect the effort to try to go with something that isn't just straight up RDJ. It takes some of those elements that we've come to recognize from that performance, but tries to go in a slightly new direction with it. I think another really cool thing is that, like, after a day, AIM actually liquidates Stark Industries. He loses his fortune. He doesn't have all of his money and resources anymore, and so, you know, he has to uh, build himself back up from, from the ground and rise again and everything. That's what we like to see out of Tony Stark. It was what made the first Iron Man movie so cool, but I feel like they speed through that process a bit too much. I guess you kind of have to. It is a video game, but then again, maybe that was kind of a flaw with telling this story in the format of a game anyway, especially if you're going to crunch it down into eight measly hours. Other than that, I do think that these other Avengers do have some really fun interactions with one another, especially when they're interacting with Kamala. Oh, to spit. About as intimidating as the man himself, hmm? <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> She's got a lot of hope and just like this optimism that you really need for a superhero story like this, especially since it's something that all of these other heroes have lost. She is exactly what they needed to bring this whole team back together. And I do think they play that part really well, but there are other moments where Kamala is just like, man, she is trying way too hard to be a serious comic book character. It just does not work, especially the scene towards the beginning where she's trying to quote one of Captain America's best 
has lines and it is one of the most difficult secondhand embarrassing things I have ever had to sit through and I hated the delivery of this scene so much it is awful and I refuse to force you to sit through the whole thing because it is it is really that bad unfortunately I really think that's all I can really say about the story without getting super into spoilers but it's not like there's a whole lot to say the foundation is there there's some really interesting ideas put forth here you know the the public doesn't trust superheroes anymore they think of the Avengers as like this horrible thing that they're glad is gone it reminds me of like the Kane act from from Watchmen or like uh, the supers from the Incredibles you know this is an idea that has been toyed with before this isn't wholly original or anything like that you've seen it done before and you've seen it done better but I've also seen it done worse than this. That's not high praise or anything, but I don't want to sound too unwarranted with how much I'm bashing this game. After all, I haven't gotten to the gameplay yet. The gameplay is fun at times, you know, especially during the campaign. There are certain missions that are really catered towards certain individuals when you get into these nice set pieces that really take advantage of the fact that you are this super powered individual. You were doing things that most people really couldn't, but the entire rest of the game is just going through these kind of bland areas and fighting robots. I mean, there's a couple of actual people that are like in suits or whatever that you've also fight occasionally, but for the most part, it's aim robots. That's kind of it. What doesn't help is that the main draw for fighting a lot of enemies is collecting loot from it, which seems really weird for a superhero game. I think they were going for this almost Destiny element, but at least in Destiny, you get to customize yourself and make yourself look like your own individual, and you are your own legend in this fantasy space world, but none of these upgrades or loot items change the way you look in this game. It's just changing numbers and your stats, and that's kind of dull. If you do want to change the way you look, there are alternate costumes in this game. I mean, it's a superhero game after all, but this is the first superhero game I can think of where I had to grind endlessly to rack up in-game currency for hours to be able to afford a single costume. It takes so ridiculously, like insultingly long to rack up enough in-game currency to be able to afford these costumes or to like get them randomly dropped for these blueprint things, which I think I've gotten maybe two in the entire time I've played this game. And man, they're not even good. They don't even look nice. They are really, really bad costumes. I think the visual design of this game overall is just bland and really uninteresting, but you're telling me you're taking some of the most iconic comic book characters out there and just making them look like this? You're reskinning the same terrible base costume and you're selling it for upwards of $20 at times for a recoloration of the same skin. I don't care that it's just cosmetic. Cosmetics are a big part of superheroes. You know, it is such an enormous idea for the way these characters look. And you know, you want to look good when you're running around beating the forces of evil as a superhero. They are iconic individuals and their costumes are a big part of that. And you're going to charge me on top of this already $60 game, almost $20 for an okay looking Iron Man suit. I don't know if I can blame Crystal Dynamics for something like this. I feel like this is more of a Square Enix decision. I don't care whose choice it was, it still sucks. It's kind of like the whole Spider-Man thing. Yes, there will be additional characters in this game later down the road, but then there's the whole Spider-Man thing. He is a PlayStation exclusive. I get it. Sony owns a huge part of Spider-Man and they were able to warp it around so that they could keep Spider-Man as a Sony exclusive. And I say this as somebody who has a PlayStation, who is getting the PlayStation 5, this sucks. They actually came out and made a statement about this. Somebody from Crystal Dynamics came out and made a statement and it was basically like, wow, people are really latched onto this one thing. We've already told you that Hawkeye's coming. We already have another character that's on the way. And I get that they were gonna be showing off Black Panther and then they had to uh, to delay that because of the whole thing with Chadwick Boseman, which is completely understandable, yeah. Postpone that announcement, show us Kate Bishop instead, but don't use like Kate Bishop and Hawkeye as an excuse to say, well, you might not be getting Spider-Man if you are on Xbox or PC, but you're getting these guys. Uh, why is everybody upset about this? It's like if you did the same thing with DC, but you cut out, like, Batman. Spider-Man is one of the most 
popular characters of all time, not even just in comic books. Everyone knows who Spider-Man is and you're gonna lock him behind a certain system. Again, don't care whose decision it was. Don't care what the business practice is behind it. It still sucks and the like dismissiveness of that is just kind of funny, but also just like really, man, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. On top of that, why am I incentivized to stick around and wait to see what you're gonna be doing with this game later on if this game doesn't even work the way it's supposed to. During the campaign, it was a mostly smooth ride. There were a couple of bugs here and there, but that's with most games these days. But as soon as you get online, as soon as you're trying to play with friends, it breaks in half. This game is so unstable. Characters are flipping all over the place. People's assets aren't even like latching onto them. It is ridiculous. It is so insane to me that this is a $60 game. And if you're willing to look past the bugs and everything like that, which I know a lot of people are, then then maybe you could have a good time with this, but it's sad because it's just the same thing over and over again. You're going through the same recycled areas constantly in the multiplayer. There's only so many missions available to you and so many of them are on this holodeck thing. The the harm room, which is just like, you know, the danger room from X-Men, but I guess the X-Men just aren't a thing in this universe, but in humans are, yay. It's, it's a room, it is a box that you are in that you just fight the same robots on over and over again. I'm going in circles, I'm sorry, but that's really it. There's nothing to this game. It is the same useless repetitive thing constantly. So yeah, I do think the story is okay. It's not bad, but it's not great. But the combat is fine. It's just that it does get too repetitive. And I don't just mean that like you're going through the same animations over and over again. You can unlock new moves and stuff like that, which is cool. But you know, you do get tired of playing as the same character after a while, so why not switch to a new character? Well, you could do that, but if you try to switch to a different character that you haven't leveled up, then you have to go back to missions that you've already completed, which means that you have to level grind your superhero character to be able to move on to new missions because they're too under leveled to move on to the new stuff. You are forced into making this a repetitive experience. You are being bottlenecked into a like hellscape of the same locations fighting the same robots until your fingers bleed. All the while wishing that there was more to it. You only fight like two or three actual supervillain characters it's so sad. You fight Taskmaster a couple of times. Sure, he's in the Avengers Initiative mode, which is the multiplayer, but it's not even a cool fight. It's just, it's just this horrible little cluster of your characters like bombarding on him and you don't get any sense of an actual battle. It's just chaos. And why is he so tall? Well, big boy, big boy. And it really feels like the grindy nature of this is just to incentivize you to pay out microtransactions to speed your way past this, unless they really think that the general populace is gonna be so engrossed by this bare as bones gameplay that you're just gonna want to grind it out for hours as if I don't have more to do with my time. And you know what? I'm gonna piss some people off by saying this, but just for the sake of argument, I tried out another live service game with microtransactions featuring Marvel characters that is pretty popular right now just to see how they stack up against each other and you know what? Fortnite did it better. I played a bit of Fortnite just to compare these two together and I think that that actually handles all of the Marvel stuff a lot more interestingly. It's doing these really cool things like putting Doctor Doom in the overworlds that you can fight and stuff like that. There's these cool little Easter eggs all over the place that, you know, actually feel like they come from a place of heart and integrity and not so much just this bland, soulless experience that is the main Avengers game. And you know what? Yeah, there are $20 costumes and everything like that in Fortnite, but there's not a $60 price tag to get your way there to begin with. And at least the gameplay is more 
consistently entertaining. What's really sad to me is that I took a look at these five MCU rushed licensed tie-in games leading up to the release of this, and man, the experience of this game, at least the good stuff in it, left no greater impression on me than the best moments of those. It should have been more than this. It really could have been. And you know what? Maybe it will be down the road, but it is a lot to ask for a player to just stick with it till then. I've done it with Destiny before, which has been a really long road. People did it with No Man's Sky, and sure that paid off, but am I really willing to do it for this when there's just better experiences out there? I mean, I would rather just go back and play the Captain America Super Soldier game than run around as Captain America in this. There's gonna be some people that are saying that I'm shilling out, that I'm joining the bandwagon, and it's really not that. I really did want to enjoy myself here. No, I did not want to like this game. I wanted to love this game, and I can't. I wish I could say I enjoyed this more than I did. I'm not going to say that this is the worst thing I've played all year, or that it isn't worth any of your time or anything like that, but I am going to say it's not worth $60. Do not buy this right now. Wait until later when there's more content to actually enjoy. Wait until it's under $30 or something like that. Maybe under $20. Don't give it your money now. I do apologize for how terribly disjointed this review has been, but this is just my basic thoughts on it in the most simple way that I can put. It is such a disjointed experience, and I really had a hard time compiling all of my thoughts into what I thought. I've skipped over so many things I wanted to talk about, but I would be rambling on for hours about this mess if, if I let myself do that. Maybe I'll do a, like a podcast or something where I can talk about this game more in depth. But those are my thoughts and feelings on the game. Let me know what you thought of the game in the comments. And because I do not recommend this game, at least not at full price, I want to go ahead and give some alternate recommendations. My first would be Captain America Super Soldier for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. If you can track down a copy of this game, I think it's actually a really solid, really well-paced experience, and it's a lot of fun to just run around as Captain America, and it was actually the last review I did on this channel. So be sure to check that out if you want to know a little bit more about it. I would also recommend Lego Marvel Super Heroes. These games do actually have a lot of soul and heart. You can tell that they were made by people who love the Marvel Comics universe, and I actually do think it's more consistently enjoyable than what is here. At least, maybe around the same level, but at least it's not $60 and doesn't have a ton of microtransactions to get good looking costumes. With all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for Metroid Month. I'm going to find a better way to structure these reviews for a later down in the future. Thanks for bearing with me on this. Thank you to Patricia Marcou and Christine Larkin, my top tier patrons. I love you guys so much and you make it possible for me to do this kind of thing. I am going to ignore all the hate comments that I get on this video and I will see you next mission.